payment processing, payment network kind of stuff. So usually when you think about Bitcoin, right, and you think about Bitcoin improvements, you're thinking about Lightning, you're thinking about the payment processing side of things. How can we make this more convenient? How can we make transactions go faster and, and maybe not have to worry about confirmations? How can you make fees more predictable? So on and so forth. The other side of that, which I personally spend more time thinking about, is custody, right? How do you store your coins? How do you um, protect them from theft? How do you protect them from either confiscation or censorship or loss, right? So covenants are kind of a low-level improvement to the Bitcoin base layer that would actually improve both situations, both on the, the payment side and, and on the custody side. And what they are is an extension to Bitcoin that would allow you, allow your wallet to control where your funds are going when you spend coins. Classic example is that of a vault. And this is a construction that's sort of been floating around the Bitcoin space for almost a decade now, uh, but isn't really possible in Bitcoin today. The way that a vault works is that rather than directly spending your coins, you first send them to a staging area where they sit for a day or for a week or, you know, there's parameters you can configure, however long you want to do this. And then after they've sat there for a little while, you move the coins. Up. Using covenants, you can enforce on the blockchain that you have to do this. You can't just spend the coins freely. You have to first put them into the staging area. And why would you do this? Well, the reason you would do this is that if you're worried about your keys being stolen and some attacker using their keys, you don't want the attacker to be able to take your coins and run away with them, right? So if you have this kind of staging area that you're required to use, then so would an attacker be. And the vault has an additional feature, which is while it's in the staging area, you are allowed to reset the timer and reset the destination. So you can say, no, they're not going to the attacker, they're going back to me. Now, if the attacker has stolen your keys, the attacker might just do the same thing, right, and redirect. And so there are some variants of the vault construction that has kind of a second backup key that will override the first, so you could actually claw them back. But even absent variants like that, and you can sort of imagine you could get arbitrarily complicated. And, and, um, but even absent, you know, backup keys and, uh, and the ability to directly override things, just keeping the coins in the staging area rather than in the attacker's control gives you a fair bit of control over what's happening, right? It means that the attacker won't be able to get the coins. As long as you're willing to pay the network fee every couple of days to reset the timer, the worst the attacker can do is just freeze your funds so they're not accessible to either of you. And for the attacker to do this, they have to remain online, which means that if you're trying to do some sort of forensic investigation, you're trying to figure out who this is or stop them or just hope they get bored or something, you have some opportunity to do that without the coins then, you know, filtering into the, the blockchain and disappearing, uh, never to be seen again, right? This also helps to disincentivize theft, right? An attacker is probably, hopefully, not going to steal your keys if they know that the best they can do is, is get trapped in this staging area loop where they wind up spending network fees just to grief you and they're not even getting any coins out of it. So that vault construction is something that I think would make a lot of people, certainly me, more comfortable if we were able to store our long-term coins there.